Hello everyone, myself uh, Janardhan Vipi, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Vanisakare Government First Grade College. In this video, I am going to analyze the poem Epistle to Dr. Arbutnot, written by Alexander Pope. Before we analyze the poem, let me give you the meaning of the word epistle which has been used in the poem which has been used in the title of the poem an epistle is a literary creation in the form of a letter it is meant to be read by the person to whom it has been addressed as well as by the readers in general the important line is an epistle is a literary creation in the form of a letter in the form of a letter this the epistle is in the form of a letter it is meant to be read by a person to whom it has been addressed as well as by the readers in general now we also understand the meaning of the word satire since the poem the present poem which we are discussing now is a satiric poem so it is necessary to understand the meaning of the word satire satire has been a powerful literary form in prose and poetry it has the capability to indicate the shortcomings in human behavior and the outcomes of the social concerns in the way in which they turn out to be silly also mirthful as a result it is amusing and influences an extensive audience likewise satire holds the capability of guarding its creator against the liability for disapproval and uh, if you look at the introduction of the poem pope was born in the year 1688 a century where there was so much confusion in the society pope as a poet wrote many satires Pope and his friends were fondly named as scriblerians. Dr. Arbuthnot, Pope's friend, was hopelessly ill. He wrote to Pope, he wrote to Pope that he should be careful while attacking others. Pope wrote this poem as a reply in 1734. This poem attacks Pope's detractors and defends Pope's character and career. this poem could be divided into seven parts it has been written in heroic couplet as i said just now this poem has been divided into seven parts let us discuss what is there in the part first in the part first pope is afraid of letting in the budding poets who are like dogs budding poets here the young poets or those who just started to write the poems now who are like dogs he is comparing the budding poets to the dogs he asks john to shut the door john is the servant in alexander's pope's house so he is asking john the servant to shut the door so that the budding poets should not come in pope is not left alone wherever he goes he is followed by the budding poets everyone blames poem pope, pope in some way or the other all people came to twitnam twitnam is the name of pope's house to scold him pope finally addresses dr arbutnot as friend of my life pope finds his friend's illness and the troublesome poets as plague pope is cons- Pope is confused on what to do and what not to do. If he appreciated their poetry, they overflow with more poems. If he says something negative about their poetry, they feel hurt. Pope gives the advice of Horace to the new poets. He asks them to wait for nine years before publishing a poem. here the means the meaning of this uh, sentence is that they should have some patience so that 
they can come out with a better poetry. The writers are unable to accept this advice. They ask Pope to make some corrections in, the poem, in their poem. They also try to bribe him. Some poets blackmail him. And in the second part, we see the poem, in the second part of the poem talks about the dangers of being popular. He ridicules the poetess by using Midas image, which ultimately represents unreliability. Pope quotes a few poets like Colley, Carly, Pavius, Bishop, Phillips, and Sappho. Arbuthnot advises Pope to be prudent, not to use the names of poets. Pope is angry again. He is willing to be honest. He claims that would not be called as cruel when he calls a fool as a fool. He then talks about how a few dramatists approach him to recommend scripts which are rejected by the theatres and the production companies. They all try to flatter Pope but Pope does not listen to such flattery. He calls himself as an ordinary man. In the part third, this part talks about Pope's life as a writer. He starts explaining why he writes. He says that he wrote not out, he wrote not out of any compulsion. Nobody asked him to write poetry, but he did it by himself. He writes because his friends like Swift, Granville, Congre, and others enjoyed reading his poetry. Arbuthnot asks why Pope publishes his works. Pope says that because his friends enjoyed reading his poetry. They prized his works. Even Dryden encourages Pope to write and publish poems, so Pope published them. The fourth part. Part fourth of this poem discusses about why Pope attacks other poets through his satire. Pope says that he does not care a little for those who find fault with him. He calls them as donkeys and fools. He sometimes tried to be friendly with them and take them out for a dinner. Pope satirizes Ambrose Phillips. Ambrose is a plagiarist. He copies works from the Greek, Greek literature and earns money. If he attempts to be original, he will not cross eight lines a year. Pope then criticizes Addison. Addison, according to Pope, is a genius. He is a good writer. His defect is that he wants to dominate the literary world. He thinks that he is the greatest of all writers. Pope calls Addison a coward because Addison attacks many, many writers but he fears being attacked by them. Lord Halifax is attacked next. Lord Halifax loves being flattered. He helps the poetasters who flatter them, flatter him. Pope then criticizes Addison. Addison, according to Pope, is a genius, a good writer. His defect is that he wants to be dominant. He wants to dominate the literary world. He thinks that he is the greatest of all writers. But as I said, the Addison a coward because Addison attacks many writers, but he fears being attacked by them. In the end, I came out with some multiple choice questions to understand the poem better. So try to answer all the questions and uh, understand the poem better. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.